Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 6 for April the 9th, 2017. We're in Unit 2 entitled God's Caring, Saving, and Upholding Love. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is What is This Love? Our devotional reading comes out of the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Our background scripture is taken out of the Gospel according to John chapter 3 verses 1 through 21 and we will be studying today from John's Gospel chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 16. Our key verse reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore the story of Nicodemus who learned from Jesus what it means to be born from above. Uh, number two, to appreciate how God's love offers salvation rather than condemnation. And the third aim is to seek to live as spiritually reborn persons who know and respond to God's love. We have three outlines today that uh, we will focus on. Uh, our first outline is entitled Jesus Conference with Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Uh, the second outline is entitled Jesus Used the Wind to Teach About the Spirit and the New Birth. And then the third outline is entitled, Jesus Teaches the Prerequisite of Salvation. We certainly thank and praise God for this opportunity to be able to come to you again through our Sunday School lesson to share a portion of God's Word with you. We hope that uh, you will uh, follow along with us today. Very important topic today. Uh, talking about regeneration, uh, being born again, and we hope that uh, you will study the scriptures that uh, we will share with you today so we can uh, support our findings uh, biblically. Uh, but I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson. The daring episode of Jesus cleansing the temple and his amazing miracles aroused enormous interest in Jerusalem to the extent that a prominent member of the religious community, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, sought uh, and was granted a nighttime interview with this mysterious teacher. And then just to move along, observing uh, the, the Jerusalem teacher's apparent confusion about this novel concept, Jesus employed illustrations to help him understand. One example was from nature, the wind, that's in verse 8, and the other from uh, Israelite history, history, Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, uh, that's associated with verse 14 from the third chapter of John, and then while there was uh, no conclusive evidence of how much this Pharisee believed in Jesus, it is clear that Nicodemus became a secret disciple. And just a little bit more context uh, about this gospel uh, from our lesson standard. Our text comes from one of the most beloved Bibles in the book, the Gospel of John. Um, in providing narratives of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, it is rather different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Those three, known as the Synoptic Gospels, are notable for their similarities. 
John's gospel written later assumes the reader knows the main points of the storyline found in the other gospels as it provides different uh, and additional uh, material. And so we want to understand uh, a little bit about the purpose uh, of John's gospel and I want to give you that uh, before we get into uh, our lesson text today uh, that comes out of John chapter 20 uh, verses 30 um, and 31 and the Bible says and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name. So throughout John's gospel there was some uh, eight different miracles going back to John chapter 2 uh, through John chapter 21 um, about these miracles that Jesus performed and he performed them uh, in addition to revealing uh, truth to his hearers that they might have an opportunity to believe and we're gonna deal with that today because being born again uh, uh, raises a lot of questions even in our culture today as it did in Jesus day and we want to be able to understand uh, from a biblical perspective uh, what this discourse uh, on regeneration uh, is all about. So if you go back to John chapter 2 verse 23 through John chapter 17 uh, and verse 26 the Son of God imparts eternal life and describes what it is um, and, and what it does. So uh, Nicodemus uh, being a rigid moralist and uh, one of the members of the Sanhedrin you might uh, understand a little bit more about that uh, his background uh, the Sanhedrin the highest Jewish council in the first century uh, was comprised of about 71 uh, members of Sadducees Pharisees and was presided over by the uh, the high priest and so uh, we want to get into these outlines today and so I want you to be prepared to uh, uh, take these scriptures uh, and write them down and study them uh, as we say more about this um, this regeneration so the first outline is entitled Jesus conference with Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews this is taken from John chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through uh, 7 I want to read this from the King James Version there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said to him Rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him verse 3 Jesus answered and said unto him Ver verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God verse 4 Nicodemus said unto him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. I want to talk a little bit about the condition that um, Nicodemus is in. Uh, from a spiritual perspective uh, and why it is that he does not understand spiritual things uh, he wants to know 
uh, it's very good that he has come to Christ uh, to get uh, his questions answered but I want to just put into perspective the condition um, of, a, of a natural man uh, if you will and so I want to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and I want to go down to um, verse 6 and we'll come back and we will uh, deal with a little bit more um, from this book but let's go to verse 6 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 however we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age nor the rulers nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing Paul is talking here but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom of God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory verse 9 but as it is written eyes has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those uh, who love him verse 10 but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. And so I want to go down to verse 14. Let's stay in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're trying to, and we want to put into perspective the condition that Nicodemus is in uh, when he approaches Jesus. Verse 14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And I want to stop right there. So, Nicodemus has a problem uh, in his faith, in his belief. And sometimes as we talk about uh, uh, being born again, uh, we need to understand that that is a supernatural event. Um, it is a supernatural act of God. It is something that is prompted by God it has nothing to do with what a man can do in and of himself uh, he can do nothing uh, in terms of of uh, of being born again so regeneration uh, is an act of God alone in which he renews the human heart uh, making it alive when it was dead in regeneration God acts at the origin and deepest point of the human person so we said this means that there is no preparation no preceding disposition in a sinner that requests uh, or contributes to the new life uh, given by God so it's important to understand and we're going to give you some scriptures to support these things uh, Nicodemus can change his situation of not knowing to knowing by believing. We want to we want to take note of that uh, because we understand from uh, Philippians, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Hebrews chapter eleven verse six uh, helps us to understand. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But Jesus' ministry of performing uh, miracles and teaching with authority caused a great deal of concern among the established uh, religious sect in Jerusalem. So much so that a Pharisee named J uh, Nicodemus, who was a ruler of the Jewish people, made an appointment to visit with him during the night. 
Nicodemus confessed immediately that the miraculous feats and the miracles uh, that were performed by this peasant and itinerant preacher from Galilee would not be done except under the auspices and power uh, of God. So this ruler uh, was seemingly unfamiliar with this type of theology uh, for he raised the question of how a man can be born again when he is old. That is a very good question. But how do we answer these questions uh, biblically? Nicodemus was puzzled. He was trying to relate uh, Jesus' statement in the physical. Many people have studied in the finest institutions of higher learning and have the best knowledge in science and the arts and even medicine, but we must always remember that there are some things of the Spirit that are not understood merely because we have a good secular education. So we said that earlier. So uh, Nicodemus was trying to, in his natural mind, he was trying to handle and to learn something that is spiritually appraised or spiritually discerned. And so uh, Jesus is imparting some things to him, uh, even giving him some examples as we will uh, look at a little bit later to help him understand uh, what Jesus was giving him was the law uh, in terms of Moses uh, lifting up the bronze serpent. Uh, Nicodemus would have known that uh, from the book of Numbers or in the Mosaic law. But what was the purpose of the law? Uh, Jesus tells us, I believe in the fifth chapter of Matthew, that he, he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets but he came to fulfill so the law in Nicodemus uh, case it should have led him to Jesus Christ to help him understand that uh, the law uh, uh, these individuals that were trying to keep it even as a Pharisee were not able to keep the law uh, in its entirety because of the frailty of mankind and the sinfulness of mankind but to be born again uh, uh, he does not understand that concept uh, yet he is a teacher he doesn't understand these spiritual things because he is natural minded so he's asking Jesus how can this be done and so I want to give you uh, these scriptures before we go uh, too far because uh, we need to understand them uh, when Jesus, particularly in the uh, fifth verse, uh, Jesus answered uh, Nicodemus saying, Verily, uh, truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of, uh, of water and of the Spirit. What is Jesus saying? Where do we get this water from? What does the water have to do with regeneration? Uh, it's certainly not uh, the water of baptism. Uh, the baptism, the water, cannot save an in individual. It is a symbolic act, uh, but it has no power to save. So, but I want to give you uh, some scripture reference for this cleansing word or this water uh, of uh, as it is figured here in our text Ephesians chapter 5 uh, verse 26 James chapter 1 uh, verse 18 first Peter chapter 1 verse 23 and in reference to uh, the spirit that Jesus is talking about uh, the Holy Spirit the agent he is the agent in regeneration uh, this is a supernatural imparting of eternal life on the basis of Christ's death typified by the mosaic serpent in the wilderness uh, that Jesus was talking about. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 21 verses 5 through 20 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 um, uh, verse 21. So the theme here uh, as we get into uh, a little bit more of this lesson certainly is that is an act of love that that God sent Jesus into this world that we might believe the testimony 
uh, 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 and be saved and be born again, born from above, uh, not of this world. This is what we read earlier uh, that Paul was dealing with in the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, uh, a wisdom that is not of this age, not of this world. Uh, uh, Jesus was teaching something to Nicodemus that is not of this world. Uh, 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 it didn't come, it didn't originate uh, uh, from a man, it came directly from God. And so uh, without having faith, uh, it's impossible uh, to receive these things. But I want to go a little bit further in the uh, uh, in the second uh, before we get to the second outline I want to go to Hebrews chapter 4 I believe we want to go there because I want to uh, I want us to understand some things uh, uh, concerning the gospel uh, and what it can do and catch this what it cannot do what the gospel can do and what the gospel cannot do Let's read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith, and those who heard it. So the gospel cannot help us when we don't believe it. The gospel cannot help us when we don't mix what we hear with faith. The gospel has all the power to do what needs to be done in our lives when we believe. And that is the theme of John's gospel. It is the gospel, uh, 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 the so-called gospel of belief. And it's very important that uh, that when we hear the word of God, that we also believe the word of God so we can get the promises that are contained in the gospel for our good. Uh, we must mix our faith with the gospel so we may have the power and we may be able to understand uh, and comprehend with all of the saints. But I want to go a little bit further to Romans chapter 10. We're still dealing with John and we're still dealing with the condition that Nicodemus is in and quite frankly a lot of us today are in this condition we cannot and we do not understand the works of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we do not understand that this is a supernatural imparting uh, so no one can uh, 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 sort of help us with this. This is not something that, that a man can do in and of himself. But Romans chapter 10 Verse 14 says, How then, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? unless they are sent. So Paul here is laying out some very important questions here. Uh, uh, the very first one, how are we going to call on, on the name of the Lord without believing in him? How are we going to pray without faith? If you go over in James chapter 1, he will tell you that uh, uh, there, that that. Uh, those of us that, that, that are wavering and doubting uh, should not expect to receive anything from God. He tells us right there in the first chapter. But Paul is asking the question here, how are we going to call on him, Jesus, and we don't have any faith in him? And then he goes on to say, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. So what that tells us is very important that you hear the gospel. You cannot be saved without hearing the gospel. 
Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the preacher is necessary for us to receive regeneration. The, preach, the preacher is God's representative. We are preaching the messages that God has given to us that men might have an opportunity to hear that message, believe that message, and call upon Jesus that he might be saved. And in this salvation process, we understand what Jesus is saying here, that we are going to be born again from above. We are going to receive this supernatural event in our lives it is uh, necessary that we have this because Jesus is telling Nicodemus if he is not born again if he is not regenerated then he cannot even see the kingdom of God we need to understand that today and the reason why that is is because number one flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God and number two we are sinners sin cannot entertain the presence of God I want you to read Psalm number one sinners cannot inherit the kingdom of God this is why we must be born again we can trace this back all the way to uh, Genesis chapter 3 Adam sinned in the garden uh, was excommunicated was put out of the garden separated from the presence of God separated from the promises of God separated from uh, the creations of God separated from fellowship with God so through regeneration through faith in Jesus Christ then we have that fellowship restored through Jesus Christ and then we are able to pray in the name of Jesus we are able to receive from God in the name of Jesus I hope that you understand this uh, these concepts here because Jesus is helping Nicodemus uh, uh, understand here that he will not be able to get this on his terms we we you know I, I've heard this uh, a lot of things over the years where people say they're going on to heaven anyhow I hope that if you're doing that that you're going by the way that Jesus said it uh, in the 14th chapter of John Jesus says no man comes to the Father but by me except through me if you don't come through me you won't be able to enter and that's very important for us to understand so Jesus made it crystal clear concerning the vast difference between the flesh and and the spirit flesh produces flesh but only the spirit can give birth to spirit or the things that are spiritual additionally Jesus reiterated the dire necessity of hearing what he was saying and not being surprised by what he was saying the new birth is a necessity so the question is asked here in the quarterly, how many of us work with unconverted, unchurched people? We also have the same in our biological families. What experiences have you had trying to explain spiritual concepts to carnal-minded and unconverted people? Very good question. We see hostility come into play disharmony we see confusion come into play and it's very difficult for a natural man it is impossible for a natural man to understand uh, the things of the spirit so uh, it's, it's, it's best that we not uh, debate scripture uh, with natural minded people uh, it's best that we give the things that God has given us to to give to them because they will not understand uh, these spiritual concepts we'll see a little bit later on as Jesus continues his conversation with Nicodemus but this is very powerful here the second outline is entitled Jesus used the wind to teach about the spirit and the new birth it goes on to say here in verse 8 of the third chapter of John I'm going to read this from the NIV translation the wind blows wherever it pleases you hear its sound but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going so it is with everyone born of the spirit so Nicodemus in verse 9 says how can this be uh, 
he asked. So in verse 10, you are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. Verse 11, very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I want to stop right there because that is the key to why Nicodemus, this is the key of why Israel uh, failed to appreciate Christ when he came. It tells us a lot that Jesus was crucified. What does that tell us? That he was thoroughly rejected. He was put to death because the people decided they did not want the testimony that he brought to us. Let me let me say it to you this way. How many times do we want that do we go to church but we don't want to hear the message? How many times do we stay in service to hear all the good singing and we see everybody and we greet everyone and then when it's time for the preacher to come, we have to go. Uh and so this is why uh uh, uh so many people that come in and out of the physical buildings of the churches never make it into the body of Christ because they are missing the testimony. They are missing the good news. I think it's profound in our, in our culture today after every message. We do what we call we are opening the doors of the church, if you will. We extend a hand or an invitation to those who do not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins. And so many times we have no takers. We have no one to come and who will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so we leave in many cases the same way that we came. But Jesus is saying some things here to Nicodemus if he would just believe. But Jesus is confirming here what the problem is in the 11th verse. The people, the hearers, do not accept. So whose fault is it that we are not saved? Who can we blame? this situation on that we haven't received of the spirit who can we blame that we don't we can't we can hear but we can't hear who can we blame when we can see but we can't see who can we blame when we don't understand the word of god you know I, as i was just sharing this with you the spirit of the lord reminded me of something in the sixth chapter of Hebrews and we won't have time to go over there today but I want you to read it at your leisure uh, but that there is a danger of not growing there is a danger a spiritual danger of not knowing and not growing not accepting the the elementary principles of Jesus Christ it, 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 it's more involved than us just giving our lives to Christ. Uh, uh, but we have to grow in Christ. But we want to we want to move on a little bit further here. Uh, at verse 12. Jesus is still talking. I have spoken to you of earthly things. So he has given him some examples that he would understand but he goes on to say and you do not believe how then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things Jesus is still diagnosing Nicodemus case he knows the problem is unbelief unbelief is the problem lack of belief lack of faith uh, lack of adherence uh, uh, lack of cooperation with the gospel you know I can tell you today 
I may not understand everything from Genesis to Revelation. But one thing I do, I believe. I believe from Genesis to Revelation. Though I don't understand all of the things, though I may not preach on all of the things, but I believe it because God said it. And that is the most important part. Uh, So you don't have to beat yourself up about what you don't understand from the Bible. You can always believe. If God said it, you believe it. Isaiah 53 and 1 asks a very important question. Whose report will you believe? So you can believe anytime. You don't have to, you know, maybe you don't understand what you just read and maybe you're waiting on God to open up some things for you in terms of your understanding, but you can always believe. So verse 13 says, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. So we can't dispute the testimony and some did in Jesus day and some are today they disputed the testimony that Jesus gave the Jews had gotten into such a bad state they believed Abraham more than they believed Jesus but Abraham was talking about Jesus but they didn't know they didn't understand Nicodemus was dumbfounded he honestly asked what do you mean this great man was trying to understand everything with his human senses this was an implication that he appeared unwilling to believe anything unless he could clearly comprehend it now this came up in the 14th chapter of John and I want to go over there because I think this is very relevant to to our discussion so we can understand that Jesus is still speaking about the world uh, in the condition uh, of their spiritual state Uh, John chapter 14 I want to go down to um, verse 15 Jesus is saying here if you love me keep my commandments And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Watch this. Whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And then verse 18, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. So Jesus is telling his own disciples about this love that if they really love him they would obey they would obey his commandments obey his teachings obey the word of God that is very important then he says I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever let me just say this about about faith and faith in the gospel what Jesus is saying here that your faith is going to lead you to some experience your faith your love your adherence to the word of God is going to lead you to experience with God keep that in mind but he goes on to say Jesus does in the 17th verse of the 14th chapter of John whom the world cannot receive this is the reason why the world cannot receive this is the reason why the world is devoid of spirit this is why the world is full of natural things you know natural minded individuals carnal minded individuals if they can't see it and they can't touch it they won't believe it Do you remember Thomas picked up that spirit, that condition in the 20th chapter, I believe, of John's gospel? He said he wouldn't believe if he was not able to physically put his hands on Jesus and touch his injuries, touch his side, feel on him. Uh, 
that he might be convinced he wouldn't believe so it happens now Thomas is a disciple but he is confirmed to the other disciples that he's not going to believe Jesus resurrection he's not going to believe it because he can't put his hands on it and that's the condition that the world is in if they can't see it and touch it they won't believe it but the thing with Thomas is that Jesus heard what he said he knew what he was thinking and he knew the condition that Thomas was in but Jesus was not satisfied with that arrangement so he tells Thomas in John chapter 20 verse 24 he says now Thomas called the twin one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came and the other disciples uh, therefore said to him we have seen the Lord so he said to them unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side I will not believe verse 26 says and after eight days his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them Jesus came the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said peace to you then he said to Thomas reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side but look what Jesus says to him do not be unbelieving but believing you can't go on that way some of us are trying to go on we're trying to live in this life physically we're trying to live this life based on our physical senses based on our physical understanding but Jesus is telling Thomas you can't go on like that you can't be an unbeliever you, I want you to be a believer so he accommodates Thomas request of what would cause him to believe but you and I have an opportunity to adhere to the gospel to believe the gospel and receive from the gospel so it goes on to say back to our lesson text that Nicodemus represents so many individuals who are yet unsaved because they have the need to fully understand all there is to know about the Bible and the Lord we can be assured that there is absolutely no one in this universe who fully understands all there is to know about the Bible and about God therefore I like this it is our responsibility to simply believe it's not complicated just believe put your trust in it rely on the gospel and you'll be able to receive from the gospel and sometimes saints we have to pray about our unbelief that exists that happens sometimes we think that God has forgotten about us sometimes we need encouragement when we have been waiting on God think about Thomas in the 20th chapter of John the things that he said and it was eight days before Jesus saw him and allowed him to put his hands in his side sometimes it's longer than that for us that's the point I want to make we've been waiting on the Lord longer than eight days sometimes it's been years of our time but think about the patriots of Hebrews chapter 11 they never saw what they believed they never received the promise if you will of what they believed but do you know what happened the Bible says they all died in faith not receiving what was promised they were looking ahead so we don't know when and how and where God is going to fulfill all of these things and promises that he have made into our and in and, and our lives but one thing we want to do we want to live with faith and we want to die in faith 
We want to keep persevering. No matter how long God takes. To deliver. To save. To set free. To heal. And whatever else we are waiting on him to do. But keep the faith. Keep the faith. Maintain the faith. And how you do that. You continue to study God's word. You continue to. To read God's word. You continue to pray. Manage the faith. Manage it. You are steward. Over what you believe. Manage it. God will help you. And these are the things. That we want to take away. From this powerful lesson today. This is all about. Salvation today. But the question is asked here. In the quarterly. This was on an Oprah Winfrey show. A drably dressed woman submitted herself to a makeup artist and seamstress. After the project was completed, she reappeared with an entirely different look. Have you ever witnessed the after effects of an individual whose life was changed by a spiritual makeover? Absolutely. We are walking miracles. The things that we used to do, we don't do anymore. Our hands may, you might say, well, they still look the same. No, they different because the deeds are different. The deeds that your hand used to commit are different from the deeds that they commit now. Well, my feet look the same. Well, they don't go in the same direction that they used to go in. So our countenance is that of one of peace. As Jesus is speaking this uh, uh, to his disciples in John uh, chapter 20. But in the uh, 16th chapter of John, Jesus tells his disciples, My peace give I unto you, not as the world gives. So there's some, there's some things that we ought to have that, 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 that the world can see that we're different. Uh, you ought to read Galatians chapter 5 and look. Look at the fruit of the Spirit. What's what's different about you since you've been changed? Since a great change has occurred in your life? Do we have a better attitude? Do we have a better outlook? But Galatians chapter 5 will tell you what you have, what you should have, based on having the Spirit in your life, the Holy Spirit being born again better quality of of individual not better than anyone but we're certainly not a detriment to our communities like we used to be because we have been born again we've been washed and we are continuously washed in the word when we you're reading your bible you're doing a f- some things in your life you're you're triggering faith you're cleansing yourself you're being strengthened the word of god has power in it to do what needs to be done in our lives we're feeding ourselves we're growing so there should be some evidence in your life someone that is born again the last outline is entitled Jesus teaches the prerequisite of salvation this is taken from John chapter 3 verses 14 through 16 from the King James Version And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Verse 15, And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life everlasting life let's think about verse 14 we gave you your reference scripture back over in numbers and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up what is Jesus saying here what does the cross what does his crucifixion have to do with being born again or regeneration very good question if he had not been crucified lifted up keep in mind Romans chapter 6 
verse 10 tells us what kind of death he died. You and I would be uh, would not be able to die a death to sin. But because he did, you and I can. And because not just he died, but he rose. That's the key. That's the key. He rose. That's what we're telling people when we uh, uh, go down into the water being baptized. We are buried with him. And we are raised to a new life. Because he was raised to a new life. And so we are born again. We are born again not to uh, uh, that old nature to that old way of doing things we're sending a signal that 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 we are in Christ as Paul says we are new creatures old things have passed away behold all things have become new so the crucifixion the death the burial the resurrection of Jesus on that cross has everything to do with you being born again or regeneration because that is the message that we preach Paul put it this way he said all I know is Jesus Christ and him crucified that's all I know that's all I'm preaching and we can get this promise I believing. The last few weeks I've been giving uh, my Sunday school class Ephesians chapter 1. We won't have time to go over there today. But I want you to read that thoroughly and see what you have as a believer. See the position that you're in as a Christian. We did not give you um Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 8 but I want you to read that actually all of Romans chapter 8 will be good for you to help you understand that you're not condemned because you are and you belong to Jesus Christ there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You have been set free. By the spirit of life. Your sins. Because of your faith in the message. Has been covered. Psalm 32 when you get time. But I want us to appreciate this lesson today. That Jesus was teaching salvation. But Nicodemus, we won't have time to go over there today, but I want you to read the 19th chapter of John. Because after the crucifixion and the burial of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this same Nicodemus was there. He didn't finish how he started. He didn't wander off into the night but he followed that crucifixion and he followed Jesus to his grave he was there this same guy and we have to follow Jesus we have to follow the message we have to follow the teachings to the end you don't have to be the same you can be different you can have the power over sin. You have, can have the power to live a new life, a resurrected life. This is what Jesus came to offer to anyone and to everyone who believes and calls upon his name. I want to finish with this closing prayer that is offered in our lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, because of your omniscience, 
you are aware of the operatives of the world you created and the people therein. Help us to not simply fill our mouths with empty words of rhetoric about love, but to incorporate love in our interacting with one another. If we truly apply sincere love, we can win this world to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I hope, trust, and pray that we have given you something to think about that will help you, that will guide you along your way. Be blessed until uh, such time that the law will uh, permit us to come together again. God bless you.